All right, so diving right into chapter five, it is all about the mitotic cell cycle. Uh, basically, what we're going to be talking about in this chapter is how a cell divides by a process known as mitosis. Okay, so let's break down the chapter a little bit. Uh, mitotic is just pertaining or associated with a process known as mitosis, and we also have something called the cell cycle. So what exactly is mitosis? Mitosis is, very simply put, a division of the nucleus of a cell. So as you can see here, you have one cell, and when the cell undergoes mitosis, it is still just one cell. But the difference is, the cell now has two nuclei. Nuclei is the plural for nucleus. So you have two nuclei in the cell, and this only occurs in eukaryotes, because based on chapter one, eukaryotes are cells that have nucleus. It cannot happen in prokaryotes. So why would the cell divide its nucleus to become two? Well, because the reason is eventually the cell will then divide. The cell itself will divide to produce two genetically identical cells. So why would the cell do this? We will talk about this part later. What's the process of mitosis all about? Um, and when we look at the cell cycle, the cell cycle is just, very simply put, a sequence of events that occur in a cell from one cell division to the next. Quite a mouthful when you think about it. Uh, do you have to memorize the meaning of cell cycle? I don't think you have to memorize it for the exam. It's good to know. But we want to understand that when a cell undergoes mitosis, it first needs to undergo a series of events, all right, or a sequence of events. So what are these events? Let's look at it. Now, always a cell begins with a newly divided cell, all right, and the newly divided cell will then undergo a process where, I'm just going to show it to you, where the newly divided cell becomes a mature cell. What's the difference between the newly divided cell and the mature cell? Well, it kind of looks the same, but the only difference is the mature cell is slightly larger than a newly divided cell. Um, so between the newly divided cell and the mature cell, the size of the cell increases and certain things happen inside the cell. We will not go into the detail of that. But when it becomes a mature cell, the cell will be able to work. What do I mean by that? It means that if it's a mature neuron, it's able to send impulses. If it's a mature muscle cell, it will be able to contract and move certain things in the body. If it's a mature white blood cell, it will be able to protect your body against diseases. So when it's a newly divided cell, it's not able to do its function yet. It will have to increase its size, grow a little bit to become a mature cell. And that is the first part of the cell cycle. Now, what happens to the mature cell is, maybe the mature cell, if it's indicated, if it has to, the mature cell will then undergo a process where the nucleus of the cell divides to become two. And when the nuclear divides to become two, that's when the cell will undergo, will undergo cell division and it produces two newly divided cells. And the highlighted cells, the ones where I'm highlighting in yellow, these cells are all genetically identical cells. So where's the cell cycle? This entire thing shows you the complete cell cycle. The cell cycle is made up of a sequence of events, and the sequence of events are three events, by the way, where I'm going to divide into uh, three parts. It's made up of the interface, mitosis, and also cytokinesis. Interface is going to be explained later when we have time, uh, later on in the topic. Uh, mitosis is just what happens when the nucleus of the cell divides, whereas cytokinesis is when the cell itself divides to become two cells. That's all the cell cycle is all about. So to simplify this, because a cycle is usually, you know, it has to be represented in a circle. That's when I would like to put it in a simplified cell cycle over here. And this cell cycle is the one that you can see in your textbook or your notes when you're studying it in school, right? So the newly divided cell will first become the mature cell. 
the nucleus of the mature cell will divide to become two. And then after the nuclei, there are two nuclei in the cell, the cell itself undergoes cell division to produce two newly divided cells. And what happens to the newly divided cell? It continues the whole process over and over again when it has to. It doesn't happen automatically. It, the cell cycle is something that has to be carefully controlled. If this happens uncontrollably, then it may spell a lot of it may be it may lead to undesirable consequences, which we will talk to, which we will talk about later. And as you can see that I've divided it, the cell cycle, into three stages. And the three stages are as follows. And I've highlighted it in pink so you can see over there. So the first part, where I'm circling in red, that is when the newly divided cell becomes the mature cell, it's represented by the largest portion of the arrow, and that is known as the interface. And then there's the second part from the mature cell, when the nucleus of the mature cell becomes two, that is referred to as the mitosis, also referred to as the M phase in certain textbooks. You don't have to, you can use the word M phase, you can use the word mitosis. And after mitosis is when the cell divides and that stage is represented in the final part of the cell cycle, which is known as cytokinesis. So, uh, in most cases in the textbook, the cell cycle is represented as a circle because it is a cycle. Uh, but I'm just showing you the one at the top, how it works in a linear fashion and how it works in a circular fashion. Uh, personally, the ones that are usually asked during the exam will be the cell cycle at the bottom. So it's usually represented as a circle. So that's the one that you should memorize. Now, so far, what have we understood? We have understood that a newly divided cell will undergo a stage and it becomes bigger to become a mature cell. The mature cell then undergoes mitosis, uh, where the nucleus becomes two, and then it undergoes cytokinesis, where it produces two newly divided cells. Now, if you notice, the length of the arrows, I'm highlighting it over there for you, the length of the arrows differ. If you notice, the length of the arrow in interface is very long, but the length of the arrow in mitosis and cytokinesis is shorter. Does it, uh, does it matter? It does matter. The length of the arrow basically uh, represents that the cell spends a long time in interface. Most of its time is actually spent in interface. Mitosis the, and cytokinesis, the length of the arrows are quite short, which means to say that in most cases, uh, mitosis and cytokinesis only takes a short time in the cell. Okay? Now, and again, just as a reminder for you, the cells where I'm highlighting in pink, those cells are all genetically identical. This is the mitotic cell cycle.